On the 22nd of February, we had a chance to go to Arkimoto's Ramp It Up event, where their new product was unveiled. After the event, I had the wonderful opportunity to speak with Mark Fronmeyer, the CEO and founder of Arkimoto. Here is our discussion. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. You're, you're maxing out the tripod, Mark. All right. No, you're fine. You're fine. So, my first question is, what's the weight difference between the the new platform and the old platform? All right. So, the, the, the target for what, you mean which, when you yes, say yes. new and old? The, the underlying. Yeah, so, so, when we go from 1.0 to 1.x, right? Um, the goal, so the, the FUV clocks in at 1,300 pounds. Okay. The goal uh, has been, so, so micro mobility is kind of this arbitrary distinction of 1,100 pounds. Wow. I would like to get the FUV to be a micro mobility, true micro mobility product. Okay. So, that means that between the new platform and other weight reductions, Shedding a couple hundred pounds would be good. Boy, that's a tall order. What is your production target on the MLMs once the factory's up to speed? Well, like five, six years out. What we'll see. I, I, I think the MLM and related technologies uh, could ultimately be millions of units okay. worldwide. Sure. Um, the, the, and you said the factories can be replicated. Yeah, and the, and the goal. I mean, really, that's you know the the platform two has the advantage of using a lot less material. Right. Right. You think? Oh, for sure. One Hummer, one hundred MLMs. Right. Right. So. Uh, if you if you think about a Hummer is $115,000, if you think about what you could do with you know, sort of the revenue generation potential, or what that means in terms of the market for the emerging world market, where even a $12,000 at mass production FUV is a very high price, right. we think we can, on, on the platform two, deliver products that really meet a world need uh, in places that where the FUV would be too expensive. At a world budget. So, uh, do we know what the battery size is going to ultimately be on the MLM? The, the initial micro future drive is looking like it's going to be 1.8 kilowatt hours. So it's a pretty beefy battery for an e-bike class vehicle. So, again, one one hundred. Yeah, I mean it's not even. It's the Hummer's 212 kilowatt. Yeah, that's you could you could make hundreds, yeah. hundreds of more meaningful vehicles. And there, it's just an absolute joy to drive. I to, to ride, you ride it, you know. Right. Drive, drive, drive. So I need you to go on the record and address the rumor that the whole reason for the MLM is that you're going to make parents have their kids charge up their commuting vehicles while they're watching it's, TV. Is I you have I, to address the rumor? I think that's uh, you know keep giving kids exercise is not a bad oh, thing. Oh, I see how it is, but. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. We're gonna have some cool stuff. To, we're gonna have more cool stuff to talk about in terms of the electronics of the MLM. Well, that's great. Down the road. And gamification of transportation is a good thing. Gamification of fitness is a good thing. And there's a, would you speak for a second about the safety advantage to an MLM with three wheels over an e-bike or e-scooter? Well, I think one of the and I, I've actually have a family friend who you know hit a crack while riding a bike, got thrown and died. Uh, you know, and it's you know a, a two-wheeled inline vehicle. You hit rough. You know, and, and if, you, if your traction goes out, if you uh, you hit ice or, or gravel or whatever, you can end up in really dicey situations. And so. Having three wheels provides much more stability. The fact that each wheel has its own motor That's makes a huge about difference. Right? Um, and then, yeah, you just it, it's it, so so you also have something that on the road has a uh, a, a much wider stance, and so it's, it's just what we found particularly with the FUV is having something that is visible is oh, a sure. huge advantage. So um, in between having better traction, better stability, uh, much better carrying capacity, yeah, sure. and then you know things like the ability to add battery modules so you can go, I, I want, I would like to get the range of the MLM with 
auxiliary batteries up over 200 miles. Well, and batteries have not stopped in the Yeah. So you've got some runway on that. On the cylindrical packaging you were talking about, can you explain that a little bit? Well, there's just been, you know, there's been a tremendous amount of innovation in the battery world, and a lot of that is happening in the cylindrical cell world. Okay. Whether you're talking about, you know, uh, Tesla's 4680 or um, some of the really awesome 2170 cells that are out sure. there. And it, it the, that is also, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a common form factor. Sure. So it means that you just have, ultimately, you know, uh, there, are, there are more suppliers competing on the same, basically the same platform. Driving down costs. Well, it's driving down, I think there's going to be a cost benefit. There's a, certainly, a, a, with the battery being, the battery is the most expensive and also most critical part of an electric vehicle. So having redundancy in terms of the supply chain is really important, particularly as we look to scale. Uh, we have seen that in <laughs> we have, action. We have felt that. So. Yeah, well, you felt it. We've just seen it. Yep. Yeah. Boy, that's not a good turning. Yeah, it's it's a it's the, the turning radius and the lean. I think are both. I think it's got both more than 45 degrees in lean and steer. So it's and this really again you this just comes from how much lean. You lean just like a bicycle. But it's it's one of those things. So oh, so when I took my first ride on prototype one of the MLM, um, it was. I leaned it further than I'd ever leaned a two-wheel bike. You just have this, you just have you're not, much more you're not gonna, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, that is always my fear on a motorcycle is the front end coming out. The leaning thing, as we can see from your beautiful display, has been around for a long time. Why, why, why? Is it because you need the expertise and the patents? Both. You need yeah, both. No, and I mean, because you could use an old patent, but you need. Yeah, the having the guy who's been doing it for 20 years and uh, been through every iteration to get to it, he just—it was like there were things he knew that would have taken us months to figure out on our own. Right. Um, and so, and, and really, the team that built the Mealy machine—I mean, this is—it it was it's, it's a it's a team of vehicle all-stars from a number of different companies that all combined together uh, to build, you know, one of the products of our dreams. Fantastic. All right, well, anything else you want to jam in at the last second? Uh, well, you know, for, for folks who, who missed it, uh, we're going to have a replay up on the old YouTube. And uh, it'll be And the website, of, of course, is arkimoto.com. Yeah. Check us out. And you can uh, not only watch the video of the MLM, but uh, but uh, you know you can uh, you can pre-register to to get one. Who knows? I, I want. Yeah, I get in line. I feel they look a lot of fun. Sandy said he's already got uh, uh, some on order, so that's exciting. So there it is, and there you go. I'm hoping to meet with Mark for a second interview, perhaps even next week. So if I missed or misunderstood something and you want me to ask him something specific, please leave it in them comments below. A huge thanks, as always, to my Patreons, without whom I could not have done this trip. Your support is how I actually get stuff done. So thank you guys all so very much. And be on the lookout for an upcoming piece where I'll actually go over more of the event itself. So subscribe if you haven't, follow me on Twitter at 4K Podcast, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.